and said, what's in it for them? Because of course, you know, he only thinks about what's in it for him. Senator Kamala Harris must have gotten under Trump's very thin skin at the vice presidential debate on Wednesday. After she outlined his consistent belittling of our armed forces, he uploaded this rambling video to his Twitter account the next day. We've spent $2.5 trillion over the term in office, my term. That's over three and a half years. Two point, think of that, $2.5 trillion. I took over a depleted military, old equipment, broken equipment. Even in the Army, all brand new uniforms with the belt. Everybody wanted the belt. That same morning on Fox Business, the commander in chief suggested that Gold Star families who've lost a loved one serving in the military were to blame for his COVID 19 diagnosis after he invited them to a maskless indoor reception at the White House two Sundays ago. I met with Gold Star families. I didn't want to cancel that. They come within an inch of my face sometimes. They want to hug me and they want to kiss me. Then they do. And frankly, I'm not telling them to back up. I'm not doing it. Joining me now is Paul Rykoff, an Iraq War veteran and host of the Angry Americans podcast. Paul, thank you very much for, for being here. I'm just going to let you have at it. Your response, at, at least to that last bit that we heard of what the president had to say about Gold Star families. Well, I say it all the time. If you're not angry, you're not paying attention. And it seems like every week he finds a new reason to make America angry, insulted, outraged. And when it comes to our military, this is a very, very special, unique, populist issue when it comes to politics, Jonathan. I think he knows that this hurts him. Uh, anytime he hears suckers and losers, anytime he hears these stories about the Gold Star families, it kind of hits his freak out button. I call him President Mayhem, but you see that, that his mayhem, his chaos, his lack of integrity, his lack of loyalty, his lack of respect for anything is on display in no more vivid form than when we're talking about our military. We're talking about belts. We're talking about saying that Gold Star families gave him COVID. I mean, this cuts to the core of the terrible human being that he is, and it's revealed around issues of our military, our national defense, and our security more than maybe anything else about his character. You know, Paul, I, when um, the Atlantic article came out where we got the language, suckers and losers, um, it was a bombshell. But the fact that my paper, the New York Times, uh, other papers and other news organizations were able to corroborate it like that. Uh, told you just how true this was. But one thing I want to know from you as a veteran and, and the community that you are a part of, what does it say? What did what does this news say to veterans? Do the, the president talks a good game about standing with the armed forces, but do the armed forces, do veterans, do current enlistees, do they feel like the president of the United States, the commander in chief actually stands with them? Well, they're not a monolith. That's that's the first sure. starting point. Because support among that community, just like every other community in America, for the most part, continues to drop. And it's not just his words. His words obviously matter, but it's his behavior and it's his policies. We see that he continues to attack John McCain, for example. He took money away from uh, the Pentagon and sent it down to his wall project. He pulled troops out of Germany that were there to defend, for the most part, against Russia and serve as a strategic lily pad. And while no one was looking, right before the debate this week, he just tweeted off that he's going to pull everybody out of Afghanistan stand by Christmas. And, and the Pentagon didn't even know that was coming. So it's a constant flow of disruption, of chaos, a lack of integrity, a lack of respect, a lack of coordination, and a lack of discipline, Jonathan. I think that's what should worry everyone the most about President Mayhem, is a total and complete lack of discipline, because it can always get worse. And if you think it can't get worse, remember, this is the man who has control of our nukes. If it doesn't outrage you, if it doesn't deeply concern you about how much could happen between now and the election, and then into January, then you really not paying attention because the stakes can always get higher and things can always get worse. And that's why our enemies are celebrating. Every day that he's the commander in chief, our enemies love this. Putin loves it. Kim Jong un loves it. Al Qaeda couldn't have imagined a better scenario than a plague that's killing Americans and has our, ch our joint chiefs of staff quarantining right. because they may have been ex exposed to COVID thanks to the president's leadership. You know, to your point about the military not being a monolith, there's an ABC News Ipsos poll um, asking the question, who do you think respects the military more? 
while the majority, 61 percent, say Joe Biden, there's 37 percent saying uh, Donald Trump, 2 percent. 2% skipped it. And since you, you, you mentioned the late Senator John McCain, um, take a look at what Cindy McCain, his widow, had to say in a political ad where she's calling for honoring our troops. Take a, take, have a watch. My husband knew Joe Biden a long time. They traveled thousands of miles together, visiting troops overseas. And they developed the kind of friendship you don't see too often. Now more than ever, we need a president who will put service before self. A president who will lead with courage and compassion, not ego. A president who will respect the sacrifices made by our service members and their families. A president who will honor our fallen heroes and a president who will bring out the best in us, not the worst. Now, Paul, I should point out that that ad that, ad that we just showed just came out this morning. And so how, how important is it uh, that Cindy McCain, is a, a Republican, her late husband was the 2008 Republican presidential nominee, but the fact that she is out there with a campaign ad in support of the Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden, says something. How important is that endorsement? I think it's important, you know, and it's not just moving people in the military and veterans. It's moving people who care about the military and veterans. And those can be people, maybe there are still some undecided folks out there, but especially in places like Pennsylvania and Florida and Arizona, you might be able to move a couple hundred people with a powerful ad from Cindy McCain. Think about Arizona being in play and how Cindy McCain could move the electorate in that state. So I think it's really right. significant. I don't think there's any more winning populist issue for the Democrats than this. Losers and suckers veterans, the Gold Star families, they are smart to ratchet it up. I think Kamala Harris was smart to go on the attack on that. And I think Joe Biden would, would be in a good position to do the same, especially because his son actually went to Iraq. Bo Biden served in Iraq while Trump's kids were back home getting rich. So there's a real cleavage there that they would be smart to expose and hammer and open up. And it's much bigger about the, than that about the election. I think that's the real core here, Jonathan, is that no matter who wins, we're going to have a really volatile situation in this country. We need someone we can trust and someone who understands and responsibly uses our military and the national defense of this country. Paul Rykoff, great to see you. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. You too, my friend. Anytime.